This is a bit of a mystery. Imagine hiking in a remote and hilly area and suddenly coming across this, a 10 foot tall silver monolith with no footprints or tire tracks, no clue as to got how it got there. In the heart of the beautiful Welsh countryside where rolling hills meet the horizon, a peculiar sight has emerged, a mysterious steel monolith. News of this terrifying structure has spread like wildfire capturing the attention of the world and drawing visitors from far and wide to witness its presence firsthand. What brought the monolith to its current location and what does it aim to achieve? Join us as we unravel the origin and purpose of the mystery steel monolith that appeared in Wales. A tale of wonder, terror, and cosmic speculation. Picture yourself strolling along, taking in the sights, and enjoying the crisp, fresh air. Suddenly, you stumble upon something rather peculiar, a significant and odd occurrence. Within moments, a feeling of terror washes over you. Well, believe it or not, that's precisely what happened to an individual in Wales. Craig Muir, a resident of Pals, Wales, embarked on his usual stroll up Hay Bluff one Tuesday morning in March 2024. As he gazed into the distance, he spotted something remarkable, a shiny silver monolith. Yet, there was no plausible explanation for its presence or purpose in that particular location. While some may perceive these structures as artistic marvels, others find them quite unsettling. They evoke images straight out of a horror movie, similar to scenes from Hellraiser. In that series, there's a concept known as the Pillar of Souls, a rectangular sculpture adorned with images of tormented humans. Craig Muir, in a recent telephone interview, shared his shock upon encountering the monolith, likening it to an object dropped from outer space. He pondered whether it could be an art installation, though its appearance could easily be mistaken for a UFO landing. Describing the location as remote, Muir noted the absence of visible tracks, but observed some nearby footprints. He questioned whether others had stumbled upon it, given its isolated location. Muir emphasized the difficulty of accessing the hilltop, suggesting the monolith might have been transported by a group of people or dropped from a helicopter. Despite this, he noted the lack of obvious tracks around the 10FT structure, which puzzled him. Known for his skepticism, Muir believed that events unfold for a reason, speculating that the news and media may have a motive for highlighting the monolith and suggesting that everything happens with purpose. Richard Haynes, another resident of the area, shared an interesting encounter he had while on his routine run along Hay Bluff. He described stumbling upon an unusual object that caught his attention. Initially, he speculated that it might be some sort of scientific equipment gathering rainwater, given its peculiar appearance. However, upon closer inspection, he realized it was far too tall and peculiar for such a mundane explanation. Haynes described the object as towering at least 10 feet in height, with a distinct triangular shape, gleaming with the unmistakable shine of stainless steel. He noted its hollow structure and estimated that it was likely quite lightweight, speculating that it could have been carried and planted into the ground by just two people. The mysterious nature of the object and its unexpected presence amidst the natural landscape sparked curiosity and left Haynes pondering about its origins and purpose. Haynes mentioned that Encountering this monolith was a completely new experience for him. He added that even a friend of his, who had been in the same area just two weeks earlier, hadn't seen it. This suggests that the monolith must have been erected recently, as it hadn't been there for long. In the wake of the startling discovery of the monolith, scientists and researchers worldwide have been drawn to unravel the mysteries surrounding its origin and appearance. Like moths to a flame, the strange presence of the monolith has ignited a fervor of curiosity within the scientific community. Efforts are underway to carefully analyze every aspect of the monolith, from its composition to its precise placement within the landscape. Researchers are employing a diverse array of methodologies, ranging from advanced spectroscopic analysis to advanced imaging techniques in an attempt to unlock the secrets concealed within its metallic facade. One of the most perplexing aspects of the monolith's presence is the question of how it arrived at its remote location seemingly without detection. The absence of any discernible tracks or traces has only deepened the fascination surrounding its appearance. As scientists and researchers continue their tireless pursuit of understanding, the monolith stands as proof 
of the boundless mysteries of the universe, beckoning humanity to probe deeper into the unknown. In the vast realm of speculative discourse surrounding the monolith's appearance, perhaps none have captured the public's imagination, quite like the notion of extraterrestrial involvement. A flood of theories has emerged, with a significant faction positing that beings from beyond our world are the architects behind this mysterious structure. Supporters of the alien theory argue that the precision and stealth required to install the monolith without detection suggest an intelligence beyond human capabilities. Indeed, the notion that only advanced extraterrestrial civilizations could execute such a bold feat without leaving a trace has gained traction among both the scientific community and the wider public. Moreover, Recent reports of persistent UFO sightings have only served to fuel speculation regarding extraterrestrial involvement, cosmic connections, and mysterious origins. In particular, a connection is being drawn between the monolith and the prophecies surrounding the upcoming eclipse in the United States. On the stage of biblical lore, Eclipses have long been viewed as portents of divine intervention and cosmic significance. References to celestial events, such as the darkening of the sun and moon, abound in religious texts, where they are often interpreted as signs of impending judgment or the fulfillment of apocalyptic prophecies. Drawing upon these ancient teachings, such individuals believe that the impending eclipse in the United States scheduled to cast its shadow across the land, heralds a time of reckoning and upheaval. Just as the darkness symbolizes the end of the world or the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, so too does the monolith emerge as a piece of the puzzle, a tangible manifestation of the terrifying signs foretold in ancient texts. According to these interpretations, the appearance of the monolith is not a random occurrence, but a deliberate act of divine communication a signpost along the path of prophecy. Its presence serves as a reminder of the mysteries that lie beyond the veil of reality, beckoning humanity to contemplate its place within the grand stage of existence. There exists a faction of individuals who perceive the monolith not merely as an isolated anomaly, but rather as a sign of profound significance connected with the destiny of humankind itself. In their view, this mysterious structure should be regarded as a sign of something grander, a symbol pregnant with meaning and implications far beyond its physical manifestation. For these believers, the monolith serves as a conduit to realms beyond the mundane, resonating with echoes of supernatural phenomena witnessed across the globe. They draw parallels between its presence and the myriad reports of inexplicable sights and sounds documented throughout history, often manifesting in the celestial expanse above. These phenomena, ranging from celestial visions to strange sounds reverberating through the atmosphere, are interpreted as omens, hinting at forces and dimensions beyond the grasp of conventional understanding. On the other hand, there's a notable subset that suggests the monolith's presence is the work of a mysterious individual seeking to sow chaos or stir intrigue for their amusement. According to this line of thought, the monolith may have been planted by a solitary figure harboring a liking for mischief or a desire to observe human behavior in the face of the inexplicable. This individual, lurking in the shadows of anonymity, may be reveling in the attention and bewilderment the monolith has stirred among the populace. It's posited that the monolith builds curiosity, prompting a series of reactions ranging from wonder to fear. By creating such a strange spectacle, this shadowy figure may be orchestrating a grand social experiment, observing how people react to the unknown and reveling in the intrigue and speculation that ensues. Indeed, the allure of the monolith's mystique seems to have captivated not only the imaginations of those who encounter it directly, but also the broader public consciousness. As discussions abound and theories spread, the possibility of a lone agent lurking in the midst, secretly observing the unfolding drama, adds yet another layer of allure to this perplexing phenomenon. Whether motivated by a mischievous desire to terrify or a more warm-hearted curiosity about human nature, the presence of such an individual only serves to deepen the mystery surrounding the monolith in Wales. Remarkably, the Wales monolith has drawn the gaze of people from every corner of the globe. From the bustling streets of New York City to the tranquil shores of Japan, 
the whale's monolith has become a focal point of curiosity, inviting speculation and contemplation from individuals from all walks of life. Yet, as we marvel at the whale's monolith's singular allure, it is worth noting that it is not the first of its kind to emerge in history. In recent times, there have been other incidents, equally as mysterious and captivating, that have left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of humanity. A journey of discovery and disappearance. On a Wednesday in November 2020, a group of scientists studying wild sheep in southern Utah spotted something strange while flying in a helicopter. They saw an odd object standing upright in a rocky canyon. Excitedly, they convinced the pilot to turn around and investigate. The object was like a tall triangle, about 3 meters high and 58 centimeters wide on each side. It was made of metal sheets held together with rivets, and it seemed to be planted in the ground with silicone caulk. Someone had even cut into the rock to secure it. The object was shiny and hollow-sounding when tapped, and it had no markings to show who made it. Although it looked like something from outer space, the pilot thought it was likely made by humans because of the rivets. The scientists reported their discovery to the Utah Department of Public Safety, who later shared photos and videos of the strange object, calling it a monolith. They didn't reveal its exact location to prevent people from getting lost or hurt while trying to find it. But despite the secrecy, people were eager to locate it. In just a few hours, a Reddit user named Tim Slane used Google Earth to figure out where it was. By comparing the helicopter's flight path with the surrounding landscape in the videos, Slane pinpointed the monolith's exact spot in a canyon in Lockhart Basin. Initially, what caught everyone's attention about this place was how isolated it was. There were no shops or other public facilities nearby, and hardly any cell phone reception. But what made it even more surprising was when satellite images revealed that the mysterious object had been standing there, unnoticed, for over four years. It was believed to have been installed sometime between July 7th and October 21st, 2016. This discovery naturally piqued the interest of people worldwide. Everyone was buzzing with questions about what the monolith could be, who might have put it there, and what its purpose might be. With so many mysteries to unravel, the hunt to locate, the monolith began in earnest. This incident underscores the importance of having backup plans, as it took a considerable amount of time and effort to locate the monolith, showing just how unexpected and challenging the search turned out to be. David Serber, a 33-year-old former U.S. Army officer, became the first person from the public to stumble upon the monolith thanks to directions shared on Reddit by Slane. After an overnight drive spanning six long hours, Serber finally laid eyes on the towering 10-foot structure, standing alone on the solid rock. Excitedly, he shared his discovery on Instagram, revealing captivating details. The monolith wasn't magnetic. It sounded strange like tapping a cardboard box, and it bore numerous fingerprint marks from top to bottom. Serber's journey to the monolith proved to everyone that reaching it was indeed possible, inspiring others to embark on their adventures through the Moab Desert to catch a glimpse of the strange object. Soon, crowds of people made the pilgrimage, snapping photos with the monolith some turning it into a family photo op, while others got creative with their documentation. Even companies jumped on the bandwagon, using the buzz around the monolith to promote their brands. However, as the influx of visitors began to transform the pristine desert landscape, concerns arose among environmentalist groups about potential damage. The monolith's sudden appearance sparked controversy, with some condemning its illegal placement and others lamenting the disturbance to the natural ground beneath it. Despite the conflicts, tourism to the area continued to surge, with many eagerly anticipating their chance to witness the monolith firsthand. But just three days after Cerber's discovery, the mystery deepened further as the monolith vanished without a trace, leaving behind a void in the desert and countless unanswered questions. Ross Bernards, an outdoor photographer hailing from Colorado, embarked on a nighttime journey to the monolith, aiming to capture some striking images using a technique called light painting. The quest to unravel Utah's secret 
Accompanied by friends, they drove for hours to reach the site, finally encountering the monolith unguarded. Seizing the opportunity, they began snapping photos, enjoying the solitude of the location. Their peaceful journey was interrupted when a group of new arrivals appeared in the canyon. Initially, there were four individuals, two hanging back while the other two approached the monolith, pushing it with increasing force. One of them addressed Bernard's friends further up the canyon, seemingly warning them to finish taking their photos before giving the monolith a mighty shove. With a loud crash, the monolith toppled over. As it hit the ground, one of the strangers remarked about not leaving trash in the desert, before swiftly loading the monolith onto a pickup truck and disappearing into the night, leaving behind a barren spot with just a remnant of metal jutting from the earth. In a baffling turn of events, the Bureau of Land Management denied any involvement in the removal, and the local sheriff's office opted not to investigate further. Instead, they posted a lineup of potential suspects on social media, further adding to the intrigue surrounding the disappearance of the monolith. The removal of the monolith stirred strong emotions among those who had hoped to visit Utah, with some feeling angered and upset, while others supported the decision, including Ross Bernards himself. Bernards described the scene as car after car streamed by, indicating the sheer volume of visitors to the area. Despite witnessing this influx, he understood why the monolith was removed and even agreed with the action. This sentiment was shared among his group, leading them not to intervene. After days of speculation, the individuals behind the removal came forward, sharing a video on YouTube detailing their actions. Andy Lewis, known as Sketchy Andy and Mr. Slackline, along with Sylvan Christensen, Homer Manson, and an anonymous companion, explained that they removed the monolith due to environmental concerns. Lewis expressed regret over the dismantling, emphasizing the damage caused to the land by the influx of visitors. Following the video's release, Christensen and Lewis faced backlash, including verbal abuse and death threats for their involvement in removing the mysterious artifact. However, on December 20th, Lewis posted a video on Instagram revealing that the monolith was still intact in his backyard, suggesting he may have saved it from destruction. Reports later confirmed that others had planned to destroy the monolith the same evening it was removed. Lewis further disclosed that he had gifted the monolith to the Utah Bureau of Land Management. This act was aimed at facilitating a thorough investigation into the origins and construction of the pillar. Ultimately, the goal is to relocate it to a new location. What exactly are monoliths? What are they meant for? These questions linger even now as we still lack definitive answers. Some individuals have stepped forward, asserting their responsibility for the Utah monolith placement. However, before delving into these theories, there's another intriguing aspect of this story that demands attention. Since the initial discovery of the Utah monolith in November 2020, numerous similar structures have been popping up all across the globe. Unraveling the Global Mystery On the very same day, Lewis and his team removed the Utah monolith. Another one was discovered in eastern Romania, perched atop a hill in the city of Piatra Neamt. Resembling its American counterpart, this monolith stood 13 feet tall and featured complex squiggle patterns on its sides. Positioned just a few meters from the archaeological site known as the Petrodava Dacian Fortress, with one side facing Mount Sialau, locally dubbed the Holy Mountain, it garnered immediate attention. However, like its predecessor, it was swiftly taken down soon after its discovery. The following day, a third monolith appeared in California, triggering a domino effect as similar structures surfaced in Italy, Las Vegas, Russia, Slovenia, Germany, New Zealand, England, Iran, and even in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where it was tragically destroyed by a fearful mob suspecting it to have sinister connections. To date, over 200 replicas of the Utah monolith have been reported from various corners of the world, with the count still rising. Although some artists and organizations have claimed responsibility for creating certain monoliths for recreational or promotional purposes, the global spread of these obelisks undoubtedly reflects the enduring intrigue sparked by the Utah monolith's mystery. 
Indeed, the phenomenon it unleashed continues to captivate the world's imagination to this day. One of the first thoughts that crosses many people's minds is that the monolith might be from outer space, especially when you consider its similarities to Stanley Kubrick's famous sci-fi movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. In the film, characters come across monoliths left by aliens at different points in human history, with the first being discovered by early ancestors. It's believed that in the movie, these monoliths represent and perhaps even trigger changes in human evolution like the moment when a tribe of hominids learns to use tools for the first time. Although the Utah monolith is not the same in shape and style, it shares many similarities with Kubrick's portrayal, from its mysterious appearance on Earth to the desolate surroundings where it was found. While it's unlikely that the Utah monolith is a sign of extraterrestrial contact, it's possible that it was created by someone on Earth who was inspired by Kubrick's 1968 science fiction film, paying homage to it in a special way. Another plausible theory is that the monolith is an art installation, deliberately hidden in the desert by its creator, who eagerly awaited its discovery years later. One artist whose work resembles that of the Utah monolith is John McCracken, known for his metallic-looking monolithic pieces, he was rumored to believe in the existence of aliens and had expressed interest in leaving behind artwork in the desert. However, McCracken passed away in 2011, five years before the Utah monolith appeared, making it unlikely that he had a direct role. Nonetheless, it's possible that another artist carried out this work in McCracken's honor, fulfilling his final wish and preserving his artistic legacy. Other artists have also been suggested as possible creators of the monolith, such as Patricia LaFonhawk, a Utah resident known for her previous work installing totemic sculptures in hidden desert locations, although she has denied any involvement. After days of speculation, a group calling themselves the most famous artist, led by creator Matty Moe, hinted that they might have been involved in the stunt. They shared images on their website supposedly showing a monolith being transported before installation. When asked if he claimed responsibility for any of the monoliths appearing worldwide, Mo responded, I cannot provide much detail due to legal reasons surrounding the original installation. However, I can say that we are known for similar stunts, and currently we are selling authentic art objects through monoliths as a service. Monoliths as a service refers to the sale of monoliths created by the most famous artist, with some being priced at $45,000. Mo continued to add confusion to the discussion about his involvement in the Utah monolith by making controversial statements ob Instagram. When pressed again about his involvement in creating other monoliths worldwide, he confirmed, Yes, I can confirm. We have installed monoliths but declined to provide further details for legal reasons. The most famous artist is known for staging real-world artistic stunts similar to the monolith, such as altering the Hollywood sign to read Hollyweed in 2017. They may be behind the Utah monolith but are avoiding admitting it due to legal concerns. However, this theory is not without skepticism. In an interview with ABC News in 2019, Matty Moe explained the concept behind The Most Famous Artist. He described it as an idea where anyone who believes they're the most famous artist becomes the most famous artist. This philosophy led him to adopt the alias. He achieved fame through selfie-friendly murals and attention-grabbing projects. Much of Moe's art focuses on the theme of today's selfie culture and how social media has changed the way we see ourselves. He believes that a good artist uses the tools available in their time to tell the stories of that time, while also connecting with past art movements. In this sense, he considers himself a great artist because he uses the internet, which is a major tool of our era, to explore selfie culture while also studying the work of past artists to see how it fits into the bigger picture. When asked about how he plans to maintain his status as the most famous artist, Mo explains that he has previously capitalized on trends to attract viewers to his exhibitions. For instance, when Hulu and Netflix released documentaries about the Fire Festival, 
he quickly organized a selfie-friendly experience that aligned with the news cycle. This attracted crowds of people who wanted to be part of something exciting and share their experiences on social media. This desire to be part of a cultural event is precisely what the Utah monolith achieved during its brief existence. Just like people rush to document it on social media and become part of its story, Mo aims to create artworks that draw people in and make them feel connected to something larger than themselves. This brings us to two possible conclusions. The first is that the most famous artist was indeed behind the creation of the Utah monolith, but they are unable to confirm their involvement due to legal issues and negative reactions to its installation. The second possibility is that Mo noticed a cultural phenomenon unfolding and decided to capitalize on it by enhancing his reputation. He might have created replicas to sell to the public and potentially installed some of the subsequent monoliths found in other parts of America. If either scenario is true, it's incredibly savvy marketing to capitalize on the excitement and profit from it. However, it's unlikely that Mo will ever admit to being the mastermind behind the monolith if it's indeed the case. Several years after its discovery, the Utah monolith remains clouded in mystery, with its origin and significance still eluding us. Unless someone steps forward with concrete evidence of their involvement, the identity of those responsible for its creation may forever remain a mystery. However, perhaps that's not necessarily a bad thing. The allure of this story lies in its mysterious nature, drawing people from around the globe. It seems that the true purpose of the monolith may never be fully understood, and perhaps that's part of its magic. Meanwhile, there are ongoing debates about the fate of the Wales monolith unraveling puzzles and debates in Wales. In recent days, concerns surrounding the Wales monolith have been on the rise. With its enigmatic presence captivating the imagination of many, speculation is mounting that similar mysterious structures may begin to appear more frequently in our midst. As the Wales monolith continues to intrigue and bewilder, the possibility of encountering similar phenomena has sparked discussions among communities. Some ponder whether these structures signify a larger trend or hold deeper significance yet to be revealed. As curiosity intertwines with fear, the mystery surrounding the Wales monolith only deepens. As debates over the fate of the Wales monolith intensify, divergent voices emerge, each advocating for contrasting courses of action. Calls to remove the monolith have been gaining traction for various reasons. Among those advocating for its removal is Craig, who views the monolith as a nuisance in the environment, particularly because it serves no known purpose or benefit to the community. Joining him are several others who share this perspective. They argue that the presence of the monolith instills fear in people, contributing to a sense of unease and uncertainty. As such, there is growing support for the removal of the monolith to alleviate concerns and restore a sense of tranquility to the area. On the other side of the spectrum, a faction strongly opposes the removal of the monolith, arguing that its mere presence adds a touch of mystique and wonder to the landscape. These individuals are captivated by the strange allure of the monolith and believe that its existence enriches the environment, sparking curiosity and inspiring imagination. Conversely, Another group insists on a thorough investigation into the origins and purpose of the monolith. They contend that understanding how the monolith arrived at its current location and unraveling the mystery behind its existence are crucial steps toward uncovering any potential significance or implications it may hold. This group views the monolith not just as a fascinating anomaly, but as a puzzle begging to be solved, with each clue potentially leading to a deeper understanding of its meaning. Amidst these conflicting perspectives, the debate rages on, with no clear consensus in sight. As discussions continue to unfold, one thing remains certain. The Wales monolith has sparked a profound and thought-provoking discourse that transcends its physical presence, inviting individuals to contemplate the mysteries of the universe and the enigmatic forces that shape our world. In the end, whether the monolith is preserved as a symbol of intrigue or subjected to scrutiny in pursuit of answers, 
Its impact on the collective consciousness is undeniable. Do you think the whale's monolith should be left standing, or should it be taken down? Let us know your opinion in the comments below, and if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.